Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to open up your word this morning. And we pray, Lord, that you'd use Pastor Izzy now to, uh, to speak to us. We pray that we would draw near to you, Lord, that you would draw near to us. Mm-hmm. Open up your word, make it real, and help us to apply it to our, our daily walk with you. Mm-hmm. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, guys, would you turn in your Bibles to Romans 15? As, um, we, we did last week's study about the three gauges that you can use. It's not a bunch of rules in our faith of, you know, a, a lot of times the, uh, in the cults, you'll see that there's a ton of rules that you have to follow. And that's not what the scripture teaches us. The scripture teaches us these sweet things of God's spirit, the, the real life in the spirit. And so we saw last week this principle that the kingdom of heaven is not about rules, what you eat, what you drink, you know, Jesus said it wasn't what you put on on the outside. He's looking at the inside. And he said in the, the, real, the real substance of our faith, he says, is that, that we have these things, righteousness, which is right standing with God. That's what, if you're truly righteous, it's not self-righteousness we're talking about. We're talking about being in the right place, you to, to the Lord. And the only way you can be righteous, the Bible says, our righteousness is as filthy rags. It's um, it's the Hebrew word for the for the, the the menstruation rags, is what it is. They said that's how our righteousness appears to God. So we're not talking about a righteousness of man. We're talking about righteousness that we achieve by faith in the finished work of Christ. So the kingdom of heaven is about being in that right way, and the only way for us to be right with God, it says, is by grace. We're saved by faith. Through grace, not as a result of works, lest any of us can boast. Nobody can say, I'm in because I'm so good. We're in because God's so good. I mean, let's get it right, right? I mean, amen? God is so good that he sent his son to take the full burden of the sin. Now, today we're going to study that in depth in Romans 15. It's going to unfold. But this is the principle we looked at last week. It's not these rules about about what we eat, what we drink. It was about righteousness. What was the second gauge that we used? Peace. And the last one, joy in the Holy Ghost. I hope that some, after I got done with that study, people, older believers were like, man, I wish I would have learned this when I was young. And I'm thinking, it's, I guess I didn't realize because I learned it as a new believer. And I'm so grateful looking back. You know, hindsight's always 20-20, right? I say, looking back, I go, wow. I'm glad I got to learn that when I was a young believer because it, it really have impacted my faith. It was about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I mean, it wasn't about rules. It was about, you know, how many of you guys hear people talking about their, quote, religious experience and, they, and, and they're making it about different things, you know, what, how they, they have to dress when they go to their service, what they have to put on, how they have to behave, all these outward things and and they never get down to the, the substance, the stuff inside. You know, how about, do you ever hear them talking about, hey, there's this sweet peace, a peace that, that surpasses all human comprehension. It says that God gives us that peace, his peace. It says, and his peace guards our hearts and our what? Our minds. I mean, you talk about a nice gift from God. If someone heard us overheard us talking at the table man i am so grateful for that peace he gives me now the bible says it's not peace like the world the world says peace is absence of conflict that is not the peace of the scriptures the peace of the scriptures is the assurance that christ is with you no matter what the conflict is what that's why we have peace is because we have a really big guy on our side and no matter what we're going through like we always, I always share the Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk to the valley of the what? Shadow of death. I fear no evil for why? Why do we fear no evil? Is there evil in the valley of the shadow of death? Oh, yeah. But the reason we don't have to fear evil is because of who is what? With us. The Lord is with us. When you know the Lord is with you, 
You talk about a piece that is like, like no other thing. It is, if we would just share that about our faith, the sweet peace of the Holy Ghost that we have as believers, or the joy, how about the joy? I mean, do we have a world that has a lot of joy? Not in the Holy Ghost. You know, they're, 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 they're longing for joy. That, that true joy that comes. And it's a joy that is, it's not like happiness. Happiness, if you look up happiness, happiness, the definition is this feeling, this euphoric good feeling that you get based on a situation. Whatever your circumstance is, then you, you know, if it's a good circumstance, someone, I just won the lottery, I'm happy. You have the euphoric feeling, woohoo, it's all good. But the problem is, is that happiness, like, has this, like, it's like the, it's like the tides that comes in and it goes out. And it's gone, you know, I mean, it can be there for one minute and gone the next. And somehow, sometimes you can be really happy about something and then someone squashes your, your happiness. I mean, they're like, I just won. And then they look at it, nope, wrong number. You didn't win. You know, oh. But joy, when you look up joy in, the, in, in, in Webster's, Webster says joy is that same feeling like unto happiness, only not based upon a circumstance, but rather based upon a relationship. A relationship what is in good standing, it says. Now, it's funny because this is the world defining it, but think about it in a Christian context. We have joy because when, when we're in a good relationship with God, we, we, we have his, his light illuminating our path. We have him guiding us and directing us with his holy... The joy of the Holy Ghost is so good. We're like, we can, we can, we can make it through this life. And what's it say? The joy of the Lord is my what? my strength you know there's a lot of believers they don't realize it but their joy meter has really gone down and they and and you run in have any of you run it i don't i'm not asking you to confess if you're one of them but if <laughs> you ever run into one of them christians where their joy is a little bit on the waning side and they're and they're and they're down on the joy meter and they're and and, and you, you what's the matter nothing's the matter Really? Yeah. Why ask? You know, you seem like your joy is a little in the slow <laughs> downside. To, see, when that joy and David, when he's when he wrote Psalm fifty-one, and he, we sing that psalm, getting ready for communion. Often, well, by the way, we're doing that next week. We were waiting for Auntie Sharon because she was she had surgery this week, and she loves to help with passing it out, getting it ready. I said, Don't worry, we'll wait for you. You know, I don't want her to think we, we forgot, but, but we'll do it next week. And, uh, and, but when we get ready for communion, we, we sing that song, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit. Now, this is the psalm what David wrote after he sinned with Bathsheba. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. And cast me not away from what? Thy presence, O Lord. And take not thy what? There's something really important. He... he your Holy Spirit from me. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. I need that. David was sensitive that to the Spirit of God, that that was, man, he knew when God's Spirit was with him. And yet when he sinned, he felt that that Holy Spirit was being removed. And then the last thing, and restore unto me the what? The joy of my salvation. His joy went in the toilet when he sinned. I submit to you, there's a lot of Christians in sin around here. And they and they don't they don't know that it's affecting their joy. They know something's not right. They can't quite put their finger on it. They usually call one of the pastors or call up one of the elders. Hey, I don't know what's the matter, man. I'm just not doing good. No joy. They might not even say it in those terms, but they can sense something is wrong. And when you don't have joy. You don't have the strength of the Lord. You're doing it solo. You're on your own. And that is not what the kingdom of God is about. God never desired for you to do it on your own. He said, 
Jesus said, I am with you. Lo, I am with you to the ends of the age. Don't, don't let your heart be troubled. I'm never going to leave you, Jesus said. I'm never going to forsake you. Man, the words of Jesus just, like, my, I don't know about you guys, but when I hear that, I'm like, oh, that's really good. I, that, that's what we call down into the heart good. That the Lord says, I'm with you, and I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll walk with you through the darkest things that you face in life. I will be with you always. Now, if we would share our faith like that with our friends, that sweetness or that peace that comes from, from the Holy Ghost, that joy that comes, that feeling of being right with God when, when we know it's not because of our own righteousness, because there's nothing worse than those self-righteous Christians. I mean, they make, me, they make my stomach churn. And I'm in the ministry. You know, some of them I like to <clears throat> give them a little straighten up, you know, knock it off. We, we are only righteous because of Christ. Now look at what Paul is going to go on to say now. He just taught this idea. These, these are the gauges for really the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And now we come to, to the, at the end of the chapter we saw Paul, Paul said to them to do, be careful that you would only look out for one another. Don't even, he says in verse 21, he says, it's not good to eat meat or drink wine or do anything by which it would stumble your brother. You know, we're supposed to look out for each other. And so he goes on, he says here in verse 15, or ch I'm sorry, chapter 15, verse 1, he says this, now we who are strong, anyone here feel strong in your faith? Strong, this is what we're to do. We who are strong are to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not just please ourselves. We're not supposed to just use our strength to look out for us, but rather we're to use our strength to help the person who is lacking strength. You think God made you strong just so you could show off? So you can flex your muscles and go, look at me, I'm strong. I'm a, you know. No. He, if he made you strong, in, and, I, and I, I just joke about the, the physical posing that these guys do. Look at me, man. Uh -oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen, if you're given any strength, and some of you have strengths, not, I'm not talking just physical strength. I mean strength of character. You have, strength, you have strengths. You have gifts in the spirit. You can sing beautifully to the Lord. You have, you have different gifts. Whatever your gift is that you're strong in, you're supposed to use that strength to help the guys who don't have that strength. I mean, you weren't gifted that gift of strength so that you would just lavish it on yourself. This is what it's all about. It is not about taking what God has gifted you and saying, oh, but it's my gift, it's mine. You were given it for a reason. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.